Hello, and welcome to NPR's Class Notes. I'm Allison Young. Today, we're going to learn to read a score. Although it looks like a complicated mess of lines and symbols, reading a score really isn't that difficult. Once you understand what those symbols mean, a score allows you to read and write in a language that is beautiful. Every symbol in the musical language tells you something, and combined with other symbols, they tell you many things. Things like what notes to play, how long they should be played, when not to play them, and how loud or soft they should be played. So let's take a closer look at what some of the symbols mean. Starting with the staff. A staff is a set of five parallel horizontal lines separated by four spaces that allows musicians to read what notes to play. Each note, or pitch, has its own home on the staff, either over a certain line or inside a space. Now, let's take a look at clef symbols. The clef is the symbol that shows a certain range of notes on a staff. Treble for high notes, bass for low notes. Because treble clef is higher than bass clef, the pitches represented on a treble clef are usually higher than those on a bass clef. Next is the key signature. The key signature tells us which notes should be played a half step higher, indicated by a symbol called a sharp, or a half step lower, indicated by a flat. Listen to what F on the treble clef sounds like. Now listen to it when we add a sharp to the key signature. Now here's what B sounds like. And here it is played to reflect a flat in the key signature. Next, we have the time signature. The time signature appears just after the clef. The top number tells us the number of beats per measure. The bottom number in a time signature tells us the value of the note per beat. So in 3-4 time, there are three beats per measure. Each of those three beats equals one quarter note. Can you guess how many beats per measure there are in this time signature? Now let's look at dynamics. Dynamics tell us how loud or soft music should be played. Here are some examples of the different dynamics you're likely to see in classical music. For example, P for piano, it means soft. And F for forte, it means loud. Two Ps, pianissimo, means very soft. And two Fs, fortissimo, means very loud. Sometimes in music, composers want the music to grow louder or grow softer over time. That's what these symbols are for. Crescendo means to get gradually louder, while diminuendo or decrescendo means to get gradually softer. Finally, we have instrumentation. Instrumentation is simply what instruments a composer chooses for his or her music and when those instruments should play. In music played by orchestras, those instruments are drawn from four families, strings, winds, brass, and percussion. Sometimes instrumentation calls for just one solo instrument, sometimes a pair, or maybe it's three instruments, all the way up to a full orchestra. This is a page from Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. These are all the instruments that Beethoven used in his symphony. Look how many there are. Hopefully this helps you understand how to read a score. And it's just not that scary, is it? Learning how to read and write in this language allows you to engage in music on a whole new level. And you can do things like learn an instrument, sing a song, or write your own music. It's not that hard, and it's lots of fun.